I've not been to one of these type of meetings, certainly in many decades, but I thought it'd be useful if I gave you a little bit of history so you can see what has happened and see that things are not really new, but it, they have changed dramatically. So I show you here a few devices that use batteries. And this is the Edison vehicle from about 1900. So none of us were around at that time, but almost all vehicles were electric then. Um, in the grass shortage in this country in the 1970s, the US DOE had a huge program to develop electric vehicles, and these are two of the models using lead-acid batteries. And if you look at the other pictures here, they show you the recent generation of electric vehicles. This one, all electrical systems come from BAE Systems, based in Binghamton, New York. Now, this is a little bit sexier one than the single-decker buses we have, but BAE is now the largest manufacturer of lithium batteries in New York State, and they supply their systems worldwide. Here's a wind farm with something like a 20, 30 megawatt hour lithium battery system in it. And we all know about these, and I don't need to, I think, dwell on that. But for those of you who haven't been in this field for a very long time, um, this field started not with an electronics company, but a little company called, it was then Esso. And we came up with some ideas on electrical storage based on lithium. And I spent, uh, I think, 15 minutes in New York City with a committee of their board of directors. The next day, they said, we're going to invest in it and build an R&D project. Those days, research was just like drilling oil wells. We put the money in, hopefully, 10% make some money. And the pictures I show you here, this is the original cathode material. This, I says, back in the early 70s. And Exxon published this last year to show what they had done in, in this area. So all is not bad with um, resource companies. They pushed it hard and, in fact, went um, commercial f for a short period. So, but the biggest change, and you've probably all seen this slide from George Crabtree, if you look at the energy density from the early days up to today, it's steadily increasing incrementally each year, and I don't expect this to change, okay? So the systems aren't gonna change, but really the biggest change here that obviously all of you are interested in, the blue line here is the cost of lithium-ion batteries, and it's come down by two orders of magnitude in the last 15 years. So we're told this is about $110, $120, is what GM is paying LG for their cells. Um, USD, we would like this to come down to about the same price, but for the entire battery pack, not just the cells. So the target is about $100 a kilowatt hour, which if that succeeds, there's gonna be lots of um, material demands. So th throughout the world, and I'm just gonna emphasize the US one, there are large what we call R&D efforts, and the emphasis is on the D, not the R. Okay, so this is an effort that was started by the Obama administration about a year ago. This is what they call Battery 500. This will get the batteries up to cell level 500 watt hours per kilogram, about two to two and a half today's present level. If this is achieved, there'll be a huge demand for batteries because this will get them into every possible application. Um, you can see this is a consortium of universities, national labs, and they pick the best people to try to solve the problem. So I think the US government is totally on board now. So let me touch on things clearly of interest to you. These are extremely exciting times. I got in this field at the beginning where you couldn't buy a rechargeable lithium battery. I went through the NICAS, little metal hydrides, if any of you remember the phones of 15, 20 years ago, you needed a briefcase to carry them in. That has all changed. So what we've seen just in the last few weeks, we, the gigafactories are going beyond Asia. I visited LG Chem about two months ago, their facility near Seoul. Obviously everyone knows about Tesla, but there are other activities now. Germany is building one. Here is Governor Cuomo in in Binghamton or Endicott just last week announcing a potential gigafactory 
in Endicott, which will be built in the old IBM facilities there. IBM came out of the Binghamton area, we've got large empty factories, and they plan to do it there. There's similar activities in Oman, Germany, Australia. So this area is seeing a boom in potential manufacturing, which means we're going to need huge demand on raw materials, and hopefully the market is there. Um, there's these huge R&D consortia set up, and all the emphasis on D, battery 500 I've already mentioned. The UK is just starting a huge effort up of, I think, several hundred million pounds to do the same thing. Um, Germany, with Martin Winter at all, also have a system. And as already mentioned, various governments around the world are dictating an e expansion on electric vehicles. UK publicly announced it, Germany public announced it, and China says they're going all electric with no actual time zone. So th there are obviously then huge demands on supply chain. You are the experts there. Um, these are the materials of interest for the supply chain. And I should emphasize, despite what you read in the literature, the next generation and today's generation are going to be NMC-based. Maybe aluminum, be nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminum, and lithium. Most of the stuff you read in literature is pure hype and is going nowhere. Okay. Um, so the demand's going to be on these materials. And obviously, I think everyone's seen in the last five or ten years, even in China, there's issue now on the environmental impact of these battery plants, on the mining of the materials, and obviously more demand we have on the materials, cost is starting to go up and it needs to come back down again. So have a great meeting and I want to emphasize this is the leader and I'm putting it in parentheses. It may not be exactly what we know today. Um, the business is clearly going away from 333. They're all trying to get to 811. I'm not sure they're going to make it. There's going to be some issues, but certainly they're going to get to 622, that's 60% nickel. So it's going to be a swing away from cobalt towards nickel. This gives you higher energy density, lower cost, but perhaps with some added safety issues. Um, I've had discussions with several of you here. So if you really want to get some background on lithium batteries, what they're all about, this is a very good book published by Seth Fletcher almost five years ago, I would say 90% of what's in that book is true. There's another book that's come out in the last couple of years where 90% is wrong. It, it was built to sell on hype. Um, this article I wrote also in 2012, it's in the IEEE proceedings, that centennial issue. If you want to know anything about anything that's electronics based, they have it in this special issue and they put it on the website and everything is free. You can download it. So this goes back 50 years and supposed to go back up forward 20 years. Already a number of things I said for the future have already, so we say, come and gone. Lithium air came and went within about eight year span. Things like magnesium are dead, so don't worry about it. Aluminum batteries are dead, so don't worry about it. It's going to be lithium on at least for the next, I would say, five to 10 years. So, so it's all going to impact you. It's going to be nickel as the major element. So I will stop there and let you get on with the real meat of, of this meeting. And please enjoy the meeting. Have a great time. Thank you very much. <laughs>